అందరికీ నమస్కారం నా పేరు నీలిమ గడ్డమనుగు నేను అమెరికాలో గత ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ ఇయర్స్ గా ఉంటున్నాను డాన్స్ టీచర్ కింద ఈ రోజు మన ఏఐజీ చైర్మన్ శ్రీ నాగేశ్వర్ రెడ్డి గారితో ముఖాముఖి కార్యక్రమాన్ని నిర్వహించడానికి శ్రీ బాల ఇందుర్తి గారిని ఆహ్వానిస్తున్నాను బాల ఇందుర్తి గారితో నా పరిచయం ఇరవై ఏళ్లపై మాట ఆయన ఎన్నో నాన్ ప్రాఫిట్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్స్ లో గత పాతిక ఏళ్లుగా అనేక పదవులలో సమాజ అభ్యున్నతికి పాటుపడుతూ ఎన్నో అద్భుతమైన కార్యక్రమాలు చేస్తూ ఎన్నో 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 నాన్ ప్రాఫిట్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్స్ నుంచే కాకుండా ప్రపంచం మొత్తానికి కూడా శంకర్ నేత్రాలయ్య గురించి తెలియడానికి చాలా పాటుపడుతున్న వ్యక్తుల్లో మొదటి వ్యక్తి బాల ఇందుర్తి గారు నాకు తెలిసిన వాళ్ళలో చెప్తున్నాను అటువంటి బాల ఇందుర్తి గారిని ఈ రోజు మన కార్యక్రమాన్ని ప్రారంభించవలసిందిగా కోరుతున్నాను Thank you, Nidima. Thanks to everybody for joining. Good morning, good evening. Today, uh, uh, the Asian Institute of Gastroenterology founder, chairman and Padma Bhushan Award Grahita, Dr. Nageshwar Edgarani, I Karakraman Thiskaraudan Lo Manak Sahakarin Chena, Marioka Dr. Sanjeeva Edgaru. He is uh, from New Orleans. Sanjeeva Edgaru to Nenu. శ్రీనివంగ మల్ల గతంలో నాటా కన్వెన్షన్ అట్లాంటి ఆలోచిస్తున్నప్పుడే కాకుండా ముందు నుంచి పరిచయం ఉంది సో ముందుగా నేను సంజీవ రెడ్డి గారికి ధన్యవాదాలు చెప్తున్నాను ఎందుకంటే అడగ్గానే నాగేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారితో కోఆర్డినేట్ చేసి ఈ ప్రోగ్రాం కి ఒప్పించడము వారు వెంటనే ఒప్పుకొని రావడం అందుకని నాగేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారి గురించి ఆ కొన్ని మాటల్లో పరిచయం చేయవలసిందిగా నేను డాక్టర్ సంజీవ రెడ్డి గారిని కోరుతున్నాను నమస్కారం అండి నా పేరు సంజీవ రెడ్డి బాలా చెప్పినట్లు ఈ రోజు ఈ కార్యక్రమంలో నాగేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారు డయాబెటీస్ దానికి సంబంధించిన హై కాంప్లికేషన్ గురించి మాట్లాడతారు అది మాట్లాడే ముందు ఆయన కొద్ది పరిచయం చేస్తాము నాకు నాగేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారు నైన్టీన్ నైన్టీస్ నుంచి తెలుసు మేమిద్దరము గ్యాస్ట్రో ఇంట్రాలజిస్ట్ నాగేశ్వర రెడ్డి గారు లేట్ సెవెంటీస్ లో కర్నూల్ మెడికల్ కాలేజ్ నుంచి ఎంబీబీఎస్ లో లాట్ ఆఫ్ గోల్డ్ మెడల్స్ తో మెడికల్ స్కూల్ లో టాప్ టాపర్ గా కర్నూలు నుంచి వచ్చి తర్వాత మెడ్రాస్ లో ఎండి మెడిసిన్ చేశారు ఆ మెడిసిన్ తర్వాత ఐ వెంట్ టు చండీగఢ్ డిడ్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఇంట్రాలజీ ఫెలోషిప్ ఆ ఫెలోషిప్ అయిన తర్వాత ఈ స్టార్టెడ్ ఇస్ కెరియర్ ఇన్ యశోద హాస్పిటల్ లో గ్యాస్ట్రో ఇంట్రాలజిస్ట్ గా మొదలు పెట్టాడు అది మొదలు పెట్టిన తర్వాత హీ నావ్ ఫౌండెడ్ ఇస్ ఓన్ ఏషియన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ గ్యాస్ట్రో ఇంట్రాలజీ ఫ్యూ ఇయర్స్ బ్యాక్ ఐ జస్ట్ హ్యాపెన్ టు సి హాస్పిటల్ ఎయిట్ హండ్రెడ్ బెడ్ హాస్పిటల్ స్టేట్ ఆఫ్ ఆర్ట్ ఈవెన్ as good or even better than what we have in this country america la ant baagund hospital so he is the chairman and also founder of this asian institute of gastroenterology tarvata ina kochana award lu gaani ivini cheppalante there are, it takes a lot of time punni punni gurinchi first medical college lo he was uh, one of the top candidate who got a lot of gold medals and finished then he is the first gastroenterologist in india lo who touched the lives of so many people including prominent people like amitabh bachchan aishwarya rai mana pv narsimha rao gari doctor so he has touched a lot of people in india the big people the prominent people along with so many people across the andhra along Uh, other places like north india as well as some of the asian countries people come to see him just to see him and so he has a big name not only in the asia even in the worldwide he got an award called schindler's award he is the only indian or only foreigner who got a schindler's award from american gastroenterology association aga which is only people who get is from us and he is the first non american who got that award that tells you how big he is to get that award uh, he has done tremendous amount of work in gastroenterology in india and um, people from this country including some of my partners go there to get trained by him in certain techniques which actually are very hard to do and learn from this country so they go there spend a month get so many of these cases to do and learn from him and come back and uh, start practicing in this country and there is a list of candidates waiting for this kind of positions because he can't take more than one or two maximum every time so that kind of uh, a name he has even in this country most of the people know who he is and uh, what kind of work he did um then coming to the awards he got of course padma bhushan uh, which is a very very uh, honorable to get from the government of india from the uh, president and uh, so to keep on telling that he published a lot of papers uh, in uh, gastroenterology in uh, most of the international journals and today's topic uh, the diabetes and uh, eye problems he also 
did uh, some of the pioneering work in India to do an islet transplants for diabetic patients so that they don't need insulin. They can produce their own insulin and it is uh, still in the experimental process and they are trying to do in the world first time how to actually cure the diabetes, especially type 1 diabetic by injecting the islet cells into the uh, body. So to if you go on, you can tell so many things, but I will stop at these days. and uh, let him go ahead and uh, say a few words about the um, talk about diabetes and uh, eye complications thank you dr sanjeev reddy garu chaala baaga chepparu nagesh reddy garu gurinchi endukante meer you associated with uh, him for so many years so chaala baagundi before mana nagesh reddy garu maatlade mundu okka sari nenu ee roju panel sabhyula perlu andarki parichayam chestanu dr surendran Chairman of Shankara Netralaya, he joined from Chennai. And Dr. Girish Rao, the President of Shankara Netralaya, he joined from Chennai. Murthy Rekapalli, Vice President of Shankara Netralaya USA from Atlanta. Leela Krishnamurthy, she is a past president uh, from Houston, Texas. Uday Bhaskar Ganti, uh, our Board of Trustee from Rockville, Maryland. Srini Reddy Vangimala, Board of Trustee. from atlanta georgia sridhar reddy tikavarapu from pennsylvania neelima gadamanugu board of trustee from atlanta georgia dr jagannath vedula board of trustee from austin texas pratima kodali our new board of trustee from detroit michigan so villandari ee roju panel lo unnaru nageshwar reddy garu maatladin tarvata okokariki nageshwar reddy garni wish cheyadam gaani greet cheyadam gaani questions adagadam gaani jarugutundi సో నాగేశ్వర్ రెడ్డి గారు ఇంకా ఆలస్యం చేయకుండా మీరు మాట్లాడవలసిందిగా కోరుతున్నాం థ్యాంక్ యూ బాల్ రెడ్డి గారు అట్ ద అవుట్ సైడ్ ఐ లైక్ టు థ్యాంక్ శంకర్ నేత్రాలయ్య యుఎస్ఏ అది ఐ వాంటెడ్ టు స్టార్ట్ బై థ్యాంకింగ్ సంజీవ్ రెడ్డి గారు ఫర్ గివింగ్ దిస్ వెరీ కైండ్ ఇంట్రడక్షన్ నేను వాట్ ఐ థాట్ ఈస్ ద ఫస్ట్ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ ద ప్రెజెంటేషన్ ఐ ఇంగ్లీష్ లోనే ఉంటుంది ఎందుకంటే దేర్ ఆర్ సమ్ నాన్ తెలుగు పీపుల్ ఆల్సో ఆర్ దేర్ ఎస్పెషలీ ఐ లైక్ టు ఎక్నాలెజ్ దట్ నేను లాస్ట్ ఐ థింక్ టూ వీక్స్ బ్యాక్ ఐ మెట్ Dr. Surendran in Chennai, when I went to support some function in Chennai and of course very impressed by the work that they are doing there. Uh, I used to know Dr. Badrinath also, not very well, but I wanted to start by a small introduction of how I met Dr. Badrinath. Uh, he was a great personality. Uh, one day in my past AAG hospitals, I was seeing patients. But OPD is very crowded. It is crowded OPD. i found that suddenly some familiar figure was there sitting wait just na podunichi already evening aipindi sir mir familiar ga unnaru ani pilichar ma room lo piliste yes i am dr badrinath uh, i am the chairman of shankar netale and appudiki was already padam bhushan i was very young still so nen i was very surprised and shocked sir mir mundhe cheppali kada immediately ga we call you in i didn't i annaru adhe em ledandi nen kuda line lone i want to come in the line i came for some opinion he wanted some medical opinion dan kosam ochanu gaani i want to wait in the line and get it done and that shows the greatness of the person maamulaga manaku poddiga telusu telisina vallante we want to get in immediately ala kaagunda aina he this is a this was one of the fantastic experiences learning experiences for me that whatever level you reach you have to be grounded aina that was my introduction to shankar netrala and i think equally we find other people like surendran of same level who are as uh, grassroots and humble as possible so it's uh, my privilege to talk in this particular session then uh, predominantly ga nanu diabetes prevention screening dan pai maatladunnaru but i want to start uh, with a con- with a uh, confession uh, that i am a gastroenterologist naaku diabetes gurinche koncham telusu endukante diabetes lo nenu i have been working in the last uh, few years on some fundamental aspects of diabetes but i know nothing about eye diseases uh, in fact you know sanjeev reddy cheppinappudu i was telling him look i am not in this area maybe somebody ophthalmologist better ani ane emnarante general ga maatladandi ophthalmology you can just touch upon so with pioneers like uh, dr girish and dr surendran here i don't want to go too much into the eye this eye part of the diabetes but recently got some new dramatic changes have occurred in the in the diabetic treatment i just touch on the few of those things so that will be the theme of my meeting but first of all e diabetes anedi i think it's going to become one of the greatest epidemic in modern civilization not only all over the world particularly southeast asia lo figures chaala alarming unnai if you see the millions of people are developing diabetes and projection kuda alagundante 
by 2030, there will be 439 million who are uh, getting into this category. And there is a huge number of uh, people who are going to be in the diabetic epidemic. And if you have gastroenterology correlation, we have what is called the metabolic syndrome, which includes diabetes, fatty liver, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, along with obesity. Even the metabolic syndrome, it is surprising. It is more prevalent in USA. It is supposed to be present in about 25-30% of people in USA. But even in India, 25% are falling in this category. And it is going to be a huge problem. 25% of population or maybe after another 15-20 years, 40-50% to 50 of world population is going to come under this epidemic of metabolic syndrome where diabetes is a very important component. So even if they're all linked together and uh, of course all of them have common starting point. I'll show you some revolutionary work in this area and all of them can now be very well controlled with just lifestyle modifications and things like that which are very important for general public. Diabetic as such and general public but I want to tell them that there are three types. Type 1 diabetes usually comes in children before the age of 10 years and the beta cells and islet cells which are secreting insulin in the pancreas are destroyed resulting in insulin deficiency. The second type is uh, type 2 diabetes which comes in older people. It is usually because of resistance to insulin and insulin is secreted normally by the pancreas but unfortunately there is resistance to this insulin and therefore they develop diabetes. So you can totally different rundu. And the problem is the general public rundu mix chest. But our interest more was in type 3 diabetes. Type 3 diabetes and pancreas are problem was the type 3 diabetes. And pancreatitis only ki diabetes into the matter. That's called type 3 diabetes. The intro we did a lot of research work and I'll tell you some of these things which are very important. And of course, Pregnancy is called diabetes, which is called gestational diabetes. So, general public, ki, these are the three things that are very important. And again, it's again for general public, what are the frequent uh, manifestations of diabetes? Excessive urination. Ekko neel tagala and bisundi. Night oka nalge salu urination keltun taru. Annam tenegane malla hungry, you feel very hungry. In spite of all this, weight loss and You are eating more, you are drinking more, but weight loss is there. And severe, I've seen many patients, only manifestation is tiredness, malaise. They just come like that. And then you investigate, you'll find uh, undetected with now detected diabetes. And of course, the blurred vision is one of the important. So as you're aging, if your vision is blurring, it's not only ophthalmic problem, any, it may be also related to your blood sugar levels. So diabetes, if you put diagnosis, ki, we Base it on fasting blood glucose level on postprandial and Bojan and Jason Roth after two hours we take a blood sample. Or sometimes see, even the custom even random blood sugar can be done. But most important, last three months, how your sugar is controlled and chewed done, there is a test called HbA1c, which is the most common parameters that all diabetologists use. If you do din gurinchi chala classifications, but WHO recommendations prakaram we say that a person is diabetic if a1c is more than 6.5 percent if figures important to more than 6.5 percent of a1c fasting blood sugar of more than 126 milligrams and a two hours postprandial blood sugar of more than 200 milligrams so fasting blood sugar of more than 126 and postprandial of more than 200 general guard this is a general thing there is some different societies have given little different types of uh, uh, definitions, but it's good to put chalo. But type 1 diabetes, first two. Type 1 diabetes, it is because of loss of islet cells, either because of autoimmune phenomena or sometimes we don't know the reason. They have a particular antibody uh, which can be detected in the blood. Will allow, because insulin is not there, the treatment is going to be only to replace with insulin. And medications won't help. Ikkara kuni advanced ucha mata. One of the areas where we have been working is to do islet transplantation. In Mikchubi Sante, we can take islet cells from cadavers and uh, donated like liver root, kidney, this kunat, islet cells from this kochu. This koni, we can give it to these children as islet transplantation. This is very well established in certain places in USA. For example, Minnesota University Hospital. It is one of the largest centers doing this. But there is a problem. 
ఈ ఐలెట్ ఇవ్వగానే వేరే వాళ్ళని ఇచ్చి దే ఆర్ ఇమ్యూన్ అంటే దానికి యాంటీబాడీ యాంటీజెన్స్ ఉంటాయి దానివల్ల as soon as they enter the body the body destroys this islets how to overcome this and give islets in a safe way and aniki ma basic scientists ikkada age lo did some research i'll come to that a little later so the only treatment is insulin or giving islet transplantation to these children the second type of diabetes is the type 2 diabetes and andarku vachedi ide above the age of uh, say 50 years 60 years you are putting on weight you are becoming more thirsty you are, you are um, again drinking a lot of water at that time you start developing the diabetes and slowly over a period of time you become catabolic e diabetes is because of insulin resistance and then you could insulin resistance ki madhyam chaala kotta treatment lu chaa dan gurinchi discuss chestamu so type 2 diabetes anedi insulin resistance valla body lo enta sugar unna kuda the other peripheral organs like muscles gaani brain and they not they are not able to take up this sugar to utilize it so sugar increase out out undi but body is more resistant they are not able to use at a certain stage the pancreas which is secreting insulin gets exhausted there is no more insulin that is secreted and therefore there is a combination of decreased insulin plus insulin resistance so it manifests various manifestations of stamata so if you take all diabetics 90% of all diabetics are because of type 2 diabetes and inko sari i just want ఆడియన్స్ ఏం గుర్తు చేస్తున్నానంటే టైప్ టూ డయాబెటీస్ ఇస్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ఇన్సులిన్ రెసిస్టెన్స్ ఇన్సులిన్ ఉంది బాడీలో కానీ బాడీ ఇస్ రెసిస్టెంట్ టు ఇన్సులిన్ నా వైజ్ ఇట్ రెసిస్టెంట్ టు ఇన్సులిన్ అనేది చాలా రిసర్చ్ వర్క్ జరుగుతుంది ఇన్ ఫ్యాక్ట్ ద నెక్స్ట్ నోబెల్ ప్రైజ్ మే బీ బికాస్ ఫర్ దట్ పర్సన్ ఇస్ ఫైన్ ఫైండింగ్ అవుట్ వై దిస్ ఇన్సులిన్ దేర్ దే హవ్ నౌ ఐడెంటిఫైడ్ ఎ స్పెసిఫిక్ పెప్టైడ్ కాల్ డయాబెటిక్ ఇంటెస్టైనల్ పెప్టైడ్ విచ్ ఇస్ సెక్రేటెడ్ ఇన్ ద ఇంటెస్టైన్స్ విచ్ ఇస్ ప్రొడ్యూసింగ్ దిస్ ఇన్సులిన్ రెసిస్టెన్స్ సో ప్రాబ్లీ ద ట్రీట్మెంట్ విల్ గో ఫర్ దట్ సో ఇది 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 ఒక ఇంపార్టెంట్ పాయింట్ బట్ టైప్ టూ డయాబెటీస్ లో చాలా కాంప్లికేషన్స్ ఉంటాయి యాజ్ యూ ఏజ్ యూ డెవలప్ దిస్ దే ఆర్ యూజువలీ టూ టైప్స్ అంటే మేము మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ కాంప్లికేషన్స్ అండ్ మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ అంటే మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ అంటే దే ఆర్ ఎఫెక్టింగ్ ద స్మాల్ వెజల్స్ బ్లడ్ వెజల్స్ మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ లార్జర్ బ్లడ్ వెజల్స్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ఎగ్జాంపుల్స్ మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ కాంప్లికేషన్స్ అంటే డయాబెటిక్ రెటినోపతి అంటే small blood vessels in the eye get affected they develop retinopathy similarly kidney lo small vessels get affected they develop diabetic nephropathy adhe naralaki small blood vessels are affected they develop diabetic neuropathy ee macrovascular ga vaste for example coronary artery disease pedda vessels are heart lo these also get blocked because of diabetic uh, uh, consequent to that or blood vessels going to the brain get blocked so they can develop heart attacks they can develop uh, brain strokes even so these are all the complications based on small vessel microvascular or macrovascular one ipudu ivanni total ga chusukunte microvascular complications lo commonest complication affects the eye that is 25% of uh, microvascular complications because of diabetic retinopathy danike we give lot of significance the diabetic chusinappudu one of the thing in our general checkup is to send them to our ophthalmology ophthalmology colleagues emo using a fundoscope they see inside in the retina look at the blood vessels blood vessels are affected ante particular ga they can make out this patient has diabetic retinopathy in fact now there are many other tests which show that um, even in the pre retinopathy stage you can detect things what is happening alage కిడ్నీ లో ఆల్బిమిన్ సెక్రియట్ అవుతుంది ఆల్బిమినేరియా వస్తుంది అనమాట అర్లీ స్టేజెస్ లో మైక్రో ఆల్బిమినేరియా సో ఆల్ దిస్ ఆర్ ఫర్ మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ మెర్ యాజ్ మైక్రోవాస్కులర్ అని చెప్పినట్టు స్ట్రోక్స్ కానీ యూ కెన్ గెట్ ఆల్ సార్ట్స్ ఆఫ్ అదర్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద మెయిన్ కాజ్ ఆఫ్ అంటే డయాబెటీస్ వల్ల ప్రాబ్లమ్ కాదు ఇస్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ కాంప్లికేషన్స్ ఆఫ్ డయాబెటీస్ ఐదర్ మైక్రో ఆర్ మైక్రో వాస్కులర్ కాంప్లికేషన్ దట్ కెన్ కాజ్ problem so the estimations are now a diabetic is two and a half times more likely to develop a heart attack two and a half times more di- di- like likely to develop heart failure and two times most likely to develop uh, uh, a stroke so these are all very important uh, areas man that we should think of so ipudu treatment for type 2 diabetes is changing uh, of course uh, there are many new drugs that are coming i don't want to go into the very complicated but most important is now again we're looking back into lifestyle lifestyle changes both in diet and exercise are now 
we realize that they are very very important for uh, diabetes any because uh, although insulin is one of the things of course insulin is now evolved from last uh, 80 years bagam but all types of insulins have come so they can be used to control but it's mostly the lifestyle and again i want i can't emphasize as much in this saying that how your diet is controlled and how you have physical activity in fact recently there are studies showing that you need not even go for regular physical activity you can do a normal activity in increased fashion in um, in your house working more gardening more and even when you're sitting in the chair just putting your heels up and down causes enough uh, exercise to decrease the blood glucose level this is very interesting because when a legs and cartel there is a special um, muscle which does not have glycogen stored in this so if you are sitting in a chair and moving your heel up and down after about one hour your blood sugar levels come down so this is now again some certain new things that are coming up. So lifestyle changes are very important to diet as we know, physical activity. Now coming briefly, I'll just, again, I said I'm not the expert in ophthalmology. In fact, that's a totally different subject. But uh, because there are, uh, it is associated with Sankaran Lethal, I just want to emphasize that at least eight or nine complications in the eyes can occur because of diabetes. It can cause uh, lesions in the cornea, in the aqueous, in the iris, lens, in the vitreous, in the retina, in the internal muscles and external muscles of the eye. All of them can be uh, expected. In fact, I know the lids are more prone for infections. So, recurrent styes was the Chalamandiki, the first manifestation of diabetes, is they go to the ophthalmologist saying, I'm get, getting recurrent sty in the eye. And when they investigate, you'll find that blood sugars are more. I, I hope that Surendran agrees with me. This is what many of them come with. And they, of course, cornea is very sensitive. This increased cataracts, we know, that can occur in these people. And, of course, um, high drops of the iris. Glaucoma also, there's increased incidence. And uh, refractory errors. Again, uh, I find that some of our people come saying that suddenly they are refractory errors. They are getting blurring of the vision and all. We say go to the ophthalmologist, but we know definitely the ophthalmologist lasts for blood sugar levels, which will be very abnormal. This is because of the sugars that are accumulating there in the, in the fluid causing this. Uh, so, and then, of course, they develop what is called a classic snowflake cataract. And the cataract is typical smart. They can make out this. And, of course, the most common uh, problem or the most dangerous is retinopathy, where the blood vessels become very abnormal. And uh, these are the pictures of a classic retinopathy, which can be seen. Yeah, ophthalmologist takes pictures and all also and that's why we now recommend of course that they go for regular checkup with the ophthalmologist and now there is a new speciality of uh, diabetic uh, ophthalmology where all these complications are seen by some specialist in this area especially the retinopathy especially is becoming a very very specialized area so Yvaintrath, let me come to something what is very exciting and new in this area uh, again not directly red drive, but in diabetes itself. There are three new changes that have occurred. And again, uh, from our institute, uh, we are involved in this three changes. So I thought I will give some idea about that. The first is eyelid cell transplantation. The introduction of Sanjeev Redigar Jepparu. So for what happens is uh, in this eyelid cell transplantation, it came to you because in children now who don't have developed type 1 diabetes, we cannot treat by any other method, especially giving insulin. But insulin is a very difficult thing in children. Just imagine school-going children, low insulin constantly give all. Not only that is in timing at all, but this can also produce severe hypoglycemia. Some of these children actually faint in the school because insulin is a good dosage. of Sorry, this is the meal. Suddenly, insulin levels are there, but they haven't taken food. They're going to hypoglycemic shock or other way around. They don't, they take it very irregularly, they'll get into hyperglycemia, ketoacidosis. So all these things are a big problem. So the biggest problem in a diabetologist is to properly control sugars in a children. The only best way to do it is to give islet cell transplantation. Take islets from some other source, from cadavers and give it to these children. But the you know, problem is these islets get rejected. So what we did in our institute is to actually do, a, of course, this research is going on for the last 10 to 15 years. We have made specialized bags. They are seen here as teracytes. They are called teracytes. These bags are immunoisolatory bags. In fact, now we have a big project with the Indian Council of Medical Research, which has given us a large fund to develop these bags in, in, in India. These bags are made in a special material where if you put islet cells in this bag and put it into the body, the body's serum in the blood 
or plasma in the blood goes into the bags where the cells don't go in so as soon as the plasma goes in and the plasma levels of glucose are low the islet cells in the bag immediately secrete insulin and the insulin goes into rest of the body and acts what is important is these bags do not allow other cells to get inside so therefore immuno rejection does not occur so these are called immuno isolatory bags when this is an experiment we did initially in the simian model in monkeys uh, initially same monkeys and allogenic monkeys most important different totally different uh, they are not related to each other so for one monkey we take the islet cells put in the bag and put in the other monkey we found that these islet cells are not rejected they are secreting insulin and for years together we followed these monkeys they don't become diabetic so this is a very important concept we developed which is now the government of india has just given us permission so we are starting we are going to start trials on this so we feel that what happens is using this type of technique instead of giving just islet cells the mundu em chesavallante islet cells teeskoni direct ga portal vein they used to inject these islet cells and this is a protocol called admonton protocol which is from canada which is followed in all centers in usa where the islet cells are cadaveric islet cells are taken isolated we have a we have a machine called ricardi machine which which we can islet uh, take out and in india we are the only center in india having the ricardi machine we can take out separate this islets and islets this in rather we inject into the portal vein and this islets go into the liver and stabilize there and start secreting insulin but if we take from the same person for example chronic pancreatic dysfunction the change of after removing the pancreas we take the islets inject into the portal vein we have published a large data on this uh, already about uh, 30 human beings were published data showing that it is very effective they don't develop that if we want to do it in children type 1 diabetes we have to take it from cadavers and then we put it in this uh, teracite bags and these bags are put subcutaneous in the skin and then we find that they are secreting insulin without so this is a very exciting new development and hopefully it will solve the problem of type 1 diabetes especially in children it's very pitiable state so if we can help these children it is very good the second important concept that our institute has been working again very important concept that's coming up is regarding diabetes and the microbiota so what we found is that there are patients having chronic pancreatitis some of them have diabetes some of them don't have diabetes so we thought why is it that some people having have diabetes other people don't have diabetes is basic chronic pancreatitis then we looked into the microbiome of these individuals and this is again very important area in medicine coming up that the microbiome that, that is our intestines bacteria are there in the intestines billions of them 10 times more than the number of cells we have our bacteria these bacteria fungi virus which are there in our small intestine to large extent large intestine control all our body activity control also body's uh, probably insulin secretion and other things also so we found that there are specific bacteria which are very helpful which are present uh, and specific bacteria which are harmful if you have this harmful bacteria in the gut you develop diabetes because of again we shown that this harmful bacteria produces some substances acting on the beta cell producing diabetes so is this is a very important concept and what we found is that if you take type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes children and adults with this type we find that the type of bacteria are totally different and if you can alter the bacteria at least in type 2 diabetes if we alter the bacteria we can now actually change the diabetic status so in future a very important concept may come that you can take the fecal material from healthy non diabetics give it to diabetics and you'll see the diabetic control will occur so this is what is going to happen in future so this is the third important thing and of course this has to be shown in a cartoon only so hopefully this will be projected along with my talk is all these years we thought that gl- glucose insulin everything is controlled by pancreas but now we know it is not we know that pancreas insulin not important what is very important is the small intestine duodenum which actually controls because all the food that we eat first goes to the duodenum from there hormones called glp1 they come and secrete uh, and influence the insulin secretion insulin resistance and so on so this is a very interesting concept now it has changed the whole concept and of course if you see the cartoon you will see that as the blood goes through it is stimulating certain incretins and anti incretins in the small intestines producing a sugar level which is normal 
But as we are eating refined food more in Western countries, all these chocolates, refined food and all, the anti-incretins level go up, insulin resistance comes, blood sugar goes and so on. So this is the very important concept that's coming. So now we feel that if you to decrease this is if you can destroy the mucosa of the intestine through heat. So what we are now doing is called duodenal mucosal resurfacing procedure and type 2 diabetics. So using heat, we can destroy the mucosa of the duodenum, which is producing these anti-incretins. And once this mucosa is destroyed, the new mucosa is secreting normal anti-incretins and incretins. So you come back to normal status. So this modifies the diabetes. And now we have results to show that in patients uh, who are uh, diabetic, not controlled with insulin and other factors, when we do this duodenal mucosal resurfacing, the sugar levels come down. A1C comes down and they get to a new reset mechanisms. And of course, they have to maintain diet, exercise, other things to go on being. So these are the three important new areas where changes have occurred. That is the microbiome is controlling the islet cell, which is immunoisolatory. And third important is this concept of duodenal resurfacing. Therefore, based on this now, new types of drugs called semiglutide are being used in diabetes. They are actually GLP-1 agonists. They help uh, not only secrete insulin more, but also decrease insulin resistance. So all these new concepts are coming. So diabetic, uh, after having all this concept, all I want to say is that diabetes is a preventable disease, proper lifestyle, diet, and probably modulating your microbiome can change the whole thing. If it doesn't help, fortunately, new things are coming like the new method of islet cell transplantation, the new technique of duodenal mucosal resurfacing, or the techniques to change the intestinal microbiome, which will all control in future. But I think still, still the most important is lifestyle and diet. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Nageshwara Diyaru. You uh, are a world-famous GI specialist. I have a request for my eye complications and diabetes. I have a lot of questions. I have a lot of non-physicians. I have a lot of technical questions. So, we are very thankful to you. So, Mundaga Irozu Ma Shankarnetra Chairman, Dr. Surendran Matladaval Singa Kortunan. Dr. Surendran will greet Dr. Nageshwar Reddy and say a few words. Dr. Surendran, you may. My memory is that last month, I think Dr. Nageshwar Reddy was the first non Chennai person to get the Charaka Award. And there were four Padma Bhushans on the stage. There were 10 uh, awardees and the 10th award was given to Nagesh Reddy because uh, first they were choosing only from Chennai and uh, he was the first person to be a non-Chennai. So, uh, hearty congratulations to him. And uh, I think uh, as he told, I think uh, the eye, the blood vessel can be seen only in the eye. I think any other tissue, you just cut the tissue, if you see blood, you are seeing only blood. Whereas in the eye, you are able to see the blood vessel, like you know, tributaries of an, uh, any uh, river like that. So I think if uh, there are changes, we have a major uh, classification of background retinopathy and uh, uh, proliferative retinopathy. And there is also an in-between stage, pre-proliferative stage. So, the background retinopathy people, they carry on for some more time. But if any retinopathy, if it starts in the eye, unfortunately, there will the same changes are happening all over the body. There will be a nephropathy, there will be a cardiopathy, there will be a hepatopathy. Every organs will have some pathy. That is, the uh, eye is the starting point where we are able to detect. And uh, he also mentioned that every... A fifth Indian above 40 years is a diabetic. Uh, I think when you go for reading glasses, I think don't go for to an optician and then have the glasses checked and then take the reading glasses because after 40, better to dilate your eyes and check the retina to see whether any retinopathy changes are there. If the eye ophthalmology suspects retinopathy, then I think they refer to uh, the diabetologist 
and uh, I think thereby we and then a lot of uh, complications are there. Grish Rao and the retina department they manage the very complex uh, complications of diabetic retinopathy wherein there is a ooze of blood inside the retina, the, what they call is vitreous hemorrhage, that which can also in a long time it can retract and then cause a retinal detachment and uh, multiple surgeries are done. And uh, so I think uh, as he said, prophylaxis is better, have a good health. Actually, four of my uh, maid servants have come so far, they are all in the 50s. And uh, none of them have had uh, diabetes or blood pressure because what I found was they worked from morning 6 o'clock till evening uh, 7 o'clock. Continuously, they worked from house to house. They are uh, working part-time in our house. None of them had uh, diabetes. So, it shows very clearly that uh, I think it is affecting only the lazy people. So, we will have to work and the ultimate mantra in diabetes is that first exercises and diet, then only medicines. Because the moment you start on medicines, then I think it will go for first medicine, then second medicine, then you will, they will push on to the insulin. And uh, what uh, Dr. Nagesh Reddy Baru has told that a uh, lot of uh, that uh, duodenal, this thing, I think may be an interesting thing. And uh, eyelids uh, being, I think I'm sure that in short time, I think uh, there'll be some, uh, this thing, treatment will come once for all. And uh, but one question to pancreatitis, are you doing uh, transplants? Yes, sir. So first of all, I think, uh, Mr. Rendan, to talk about eye problems in front of you and Dr. Girish Rao for me was a little <laughs> difficult uh, option, but... Uh, uh, I, I just briefly touched on those things and I know, of course, I think diabetic retinopathy itself is a huge area of research and so many things are happening even in our country. Uh, regarding pancreatitis, uh, yes, I think pancreatitis, uh, especially the type of pancreatitis we see in India, the chronic pancreatitis or so-called uh, the South Indian pancreatitis, uh, this is the type of pancreatitis where diabetes is present in about 50 to 60 percent of the people. And these patients uh, have less retinopathy compared to, let's say, a type 2 diabetic patient. For some reason, we do not know why. Microvascular complications are less compared to a type 2 diabetes. But even them, we now advise them that once they become diabetic, to go every six months to our ophthalmology department and get checkups done. Because I think one of the most neglected things in a diabetic patient is eye checkup. They think diabetes is only sugar. They forget that. The other uh, microvascular complications. So foot, of course, obviously, when they have ulcers, they go. Neuropathy, they develop. But uh, eyes, they don't. They just go to, as you say, to some uh, local shop and get some specs done and all that, which is uh, absolutely something that I think we should now emphasize more and more. I think all diabetic clinics, of course, fortunately, now I think have ophthalmologists there. But this becomes an extremely important component of uh, diabetic. So pancreatitis, we see chronic pancreatitis. We are now doing auto eyelid cell transplantation in them. That is, we remove the pancreas, either partial or complete. And uh, these patients will become very brittle diabetic. To avoid that, we are now taking this pancreas, putting them in the recording machine. Eyelid cells come out separately. We then put them in a special solution. And if, because it's the same patient, we don't require therocyte. We directly inject to the portal vein into the liver. And these people, we find that the chance of diabetes is very less. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nagesh Reddy and uh, Dr. Surendran. Next, uh, my guest uh, is my Sankar Netralaya President, Dr. Girish Rao. Today, he is here to invite uh, Dr. Nagesh Reddy to visit uh, Sankar Netralaya facilities in Chennai. So, I know Dr. Girish Rao and Martla Dawal Good evening, sir. <clears throat> and it's an uh, honor to be sharing screen time with you. I think uh, it's also very nostalgic to hear your interactions with Dr. Badrina, an absolute uh, gentleman, humble gentleman to the core. And I think you share not only the clinical acumen, but I think even the personality with him. So it's, um, it's an honor to be speaking to you. And I think you, your talk uh, on the diabetic retinopathy has been absolutely, uh, I would say, uh, an eye opener for us in terms of the future possibilities. We as uh, retina specialists, 
only look at the green aspects so of what potentially facing us we have potentially close to 77 million uh, diabetics in india and out of which about 4 million have sight threatening let me be right now who require a treatment urgent and there are obviously major issues in terms of uh, the skilled manpower and the resources in the country to reach out to all these 4 million i think uh, dr uh, surendra has already spoken a lot about the retinopathy i will just tell some of the work that we at chinkanetale did uh, in terms of mass screening and we had this landmark uh, uh, population based screening that is called as the sn dreams project that was done uh, last decade and it actually stands for chinkanetale diabetic retinopathy epidemiology and molecular genetics study so we this was done in uh, south india we have done more than 15000 uh, patients who have been followed up over the last 4 years and we looked at not only their uh, diabetic status but also uh, in detail have done this uh, their genetic uh, analysis uh, and we have done this along with uh, mohan's diabetes uh, center also we have a huge data uh, and uh, we have more than 100 publications now coming out of this study alone and this has been quoted across the globe uh, for various research activities we are also collaborating very closely with uh, microsoft with google and carl zeiss and trying to analyze our huge database of fundus photographs for the last 40 decades and uh, we are now developing algorithms where just a technician based fundus photography would be able to pick up a retinopathy at an early stage and classify it into a uh, treatable or a non treatable uh, retinopathy which basically will help us in streamlining and proper utilization of our resources so that we don't require a doctor to go to the rural area even a technician can take a photograph and that photograph when it's analyzed on the spot can tell whether this requires an urgent referral to the treating center or whether this patient can just follow up back with their his diabetologist and come for a check up after 3 months 6 months all this is possible recently just yesterday we had a another collaboration with an iceland company where we are developing a process called as retina rest and all it requires is input of five basic parameters and this can be done by any physician across the globe and these five parameters on the spot tells whether this patient is at a risk of developing sight threatening retinopathy so you don't even require a fundus photograph or something this way. so there are various ways of trying to reduce the stress in the uh, existing ophthalmology or the manpower and try and pick up this retinopathy at a very early, early stage because this is entirely preventable and the cost for prevention is much lesser than the actual cost for treatment in the long run so um, i just wanted to share some of the work that we are and this is as uh, sir has said this is work in progress so i am sure as technology increases as the understanding of the disease increases we will have much better tools to diagnose it at much earlier levels than treated before we actually spend a huge amount in treating complex uh, cases of vitreous hemorrhage or traction detachments or even those conditions which require such complex uh, procedures like an eyelet cell transplant or a duodenal resurfacing but all in all i think uh, it it does aug- augur well to the population as such that we have pioneers in the fields of uh, medicine who are doing uh, mind boggling work yeah. and as sir said hopefully we will have the next nobel laureate who will do some path breaking work which simplifies the Uh, whole process of diabetic treatment and uh, sir i just have one question what do you think is the role of hbavc i think hbavc as a parameter is underutilized in our country yes yes and we still I, go I, by just the fp yeah. the fasting or the post meal so i just wanted yeah. to know your take on this yeah so dr grisha first of all i think i should compliment shankar netral i have been actually following some of the literature and the work that you are doing especially in the field of uh, public health especially in retinopathy is i think phenomenal in fact i think uh, soon artificial intelligence as a part of your this thing is going to come and yes. ai as you rightly said you can identify or even prematurely identify some of the things and then classify triage into those who require 
treatment and those who are going to benefit and i think it's going to help a huge uh, number of people so i think that's going to be the future in that area as you rightly said uh, uh, actually regarding uh, the, the the issue of uh, uh, awareness i think that is something again shankar nathra is doing a great job in um, getting this awareness into the people and i i've been always an admirer of your institute for very long in doing it in a, such a uh, fashion which is absolutely non commercial and one of the few institutions in the country uh, which is a role model for others uh, uh, i think uh, i be mean, i i've also heard that there have been many studies on the way shankar nathan functions uh, i think some is actually a phd subject to show how it actually functioning so effective in a country like us giving medical care now your question was regarding uh, which one girish it was uh, the hba ones the role of yeah, hba i think i absolutely agree uh, i think the most accurate method of assessing uh, diabetic control is a1c because a1c determines the last 3 months control of blood sugar whereas fasting sugar or uh, postprandial or random sugar is indicating at the point what is happening so whole 3 months you may be controlling it well and that particular day if it is uh, abnormal then unnecessary treatment is given wrongly so a1c must be the main method of course all the diabetologists use it but unfortunately most of the general practitioners still are not utilizing it as much as is done and one of the problems of course is the no spot a1c just now we are starting to get also spot a1c test where on the spot just taking a drop of blood you can tell immediately what is the a1c so i think a hbmc should be the basic uh, uh treatment uh, parameter that should be taken into account when treating patients with and we know that below 6.5 is what is expected and uh, many normal people have about 5.5 but certainly somebody above 7.5 should be immediately tackled or his chance of problems would be very high thank you sir and thank you. Uh, I uh, missed an opportunity meeting you when you were last here in Chennai. So I extend a uh, welcome. The next time you are in Chennai, do visit us, and uh, we'd be happy to hear this talk in front of a medical crowd. Uh, so just take it as an invitation for us. Sure, Girish. Sure, I'll Thank definitely you. be delighted to come there. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Girish Rao and uh, Dr. Nageshwar Adiyaru. And uh, next, man, uh, ante. नैन बोर्ड आफ् ट्रस्ट अर्जेंट एमर्जेंसी वाक रिक्वेस्ट श्रीधर रेडी तिखर अवर बोर्ड आफ् ट्रस्ट फ्रम पेनिया नमस्ते सर प्रोग्रम द्वारा मिम्मेल कल आनंद मिम्मेल फाउत अकांप्लीस रीसर्च चूस्टे वेरी इंस्पैर सर यू हचीव अम श्यूर यू वि अचीविंग लाट मोर इन दूर थ्री एरिया सर डयाबेटी एरिया इंप्रूवेंट and you said uh, yeah it's curable completely so we me view lo any yes lo uh, cure available out there sir uh and sir etiquette first of all i think before at that point as again i want to emphasize diabetes is a lifestyle disease lifestyle and diet are the main ones so it is now preventable disease at present definitely preventable except type 1 disease which we cannot control type 2 which is 90% diabetes preventable now regarding the cure i think uh, the most important uh, realization ipudu em ochindante mana chinna pregullo oka substance secrete avta undi which is a diabetic intestinal peptide antar dan inka dan isolate cheyaledu ee intestinal peptide anedi insulin resistance produce chestundi insulin resistance valla maniki type 2 diabetes develop avutundi that the whole basis of type 2 diabetes is based on insulin resistance हारमोन एग्जाक्ट अखंड सीक्रेट अंतर अन्नी चोटल के एलागल इवन चाल रिसर्च जरूर ए वन दिन प्यूरीफाई तरह इंको फाइव सिक्स इयर्स पड़ती दी आचन तरह मन दाखिल यूजल ऐ मेडिकेशन कैन बी प्रोड्यूस इपड़े चूस्ते मेड सूटाइड दिन कांबिनेशन अटे जीएल वन अगोनिस्ट जीपी agonis ante these are from the small intestine anamata ee chinna pregulu secrete avutunayi so in in rojulu manam treatment anta kuda insulin nu insulin secreting substance dan pain ichchavalamu oka metformin ni common ga vaartuntam anamata adi kuda insulin resistance takistundi kani for the first time physiological ga ee hormones use chesi create chestunnaru semaglutide ane medicine ipudu chaala varaku diabetologists ekku use chestunnaru for example 
రీసెంట్ గా న్యూ ఇంగ్లాండ్ జర్నల్ మెడిసిన్ అంటే మా మేజర్ మెడికల్ జర్నల్ లో టూ ఆర్ త్రీ వెరీ బిగ్ ఆర్టికల్స్ సజెస్టింగ్ దట్ దే ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు బికమ్ ద మెయిన్ స్టే ఆఫ్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ లాగా వచ్చాయమాట సో మన అనుకున్నది ఇంకొక ఒక టెన్ ఇయర్స్ లోపలే మనకి రీసెర్చ్ చాలా అడ్వాన్స్ కెళ్ళి చాలా వరకు ఈ కరెంట్ ట్రీట్మెంట్ ప్యాటర్న్ చేంజ్ అయిపోయి మోర్ టువర్డ్స్ క్యూఆర్ వీకెన్సీ దే సమ్ జెనెటిక్ ఫ్యాక్టర్ కూడా ఉంది దీంట్లో అది అఫ్ కోర్స్ యూ కెనాట్ కంట్రోల్ బట్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఏమంటే ఇట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఈస్ విత్ ఇన్ అస్ ఈ డయాబెటీస్ అనేది మనమే ప్రివెంట్ చేసుకొని మనమే క్యూర్ చేసుకోవచ్చు అంటే ఎస్పెషలీ ఎక్సర్సైజ్ డైట్ తో థ్యాంక్ యూ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ శ్రీధర్ నెక్స్ట్ మా శంకర్నేత్రాలయ యుఎస్ఏ వైస్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ మూర్తి రేఖపల్లి గారు అట్లాంటా నుండి మాట్లాడుతున్నారు మూర్తి గారు నమస్కారం అండి డాక్టర్ నాగేశ్వర్ రెడ్డి గారు నమస్కారం సార్ మిమ్మల్ని ఈ రకంగా కలవటం చాలా ఇట్స్ ఎ గ్రేట్ ఆనర్ సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ ఫర్ యువర్ సర్వీసెస్ ఇన్ జనరల్ కరోనా పీక్ టైమ్ లో మీ సర్వీసెస్ న్యూస్ పేపర్స్ లో యూట్యూబ్ లో అట్లా ఫాలో అయ్యాం సార్ థ్యాంక్ యూ వెరీ మచ్ ఫర్ యువర్ సర్వీసెస్ టు ద నేషన్ నేను నాన్ మెడికల్ ప్రొఫెషన్ లో ఉన్నాను అంటే నాకు చిన్న క్వశ్చన్స్ ఉన్నాయి సార్ ఇది రివర్సిబుల్ లా అండి డయాబెటీస్ ఇంకొక రెండు క్వశ్చన్స్ సార్ ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ అన్నారు సార్ అంటే ఒక వచ్చిన సజెషన్ ఏంటంటే మీరు ఇరవై నాలుగు గంటల్లో చూజ్ ఎనీ ఎయిట్ అవర్స్ ఈట్ ఓన్లీ ఇన్ దోస్ ఎయిట్ అవర్స్ సో దట్ రెస్ట్ ఆఫ్ ది సిక్స్టీన్ అవర్స్ లో బాడీ ఇన్సులిన్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ చేయక్కలేదని సజెషన్ వచ్చింది సార్ ఇంకోటి మేము లేమన్ గా వినేది ఏంటంటే రైస్ తినటం తగ్గించండి అని అంటుంటారు సార్ ఏమన్నా వీట్ బేస్డ్ వాటికి వెళ్ళాలా ఏమన్నా దాంతో ఏమైనా గ్లూటెన్ రిలేటెడ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ వస్తాయి అవి సార్ నా క్వశ్చన్స్ నమస్తే సార్ ఈ మూడో మంచి క్వశ్చన్స్ అండి మూర్తి గారు ఫస్ట్ ఏమంటే రివర్సిబిలిటీ అంటే డెఫినెట్ గా అర్లీ స్టేజెస్ లో టైప్ వన్ డయాబెటీస్ లో ఇన్సులిన్ లెవెల్స్ బాగా హైగా ఉంటాయి అన్నమాట మనకు మెయిన్ గా రెసిస్టెన్స్ ఎక్కువ సో ఈ రెసిస్టెన్స్ మనము తీసేస్తే టోటలీ రివర్సిబుల్ రెసిస్టెన్స్ ఎలా తగ్గించవచ్చు బై ఫిజికల్ యాక్టివిటీ ప్రాపర్ డయట్ ఈ కొత్త డ్రగ్స్ కొన్ని వస్తున్నాయి రెసిస్టెన్స్ తగ్గించడానికి అదే విధంగా డియోడినమ్ లో ఉన్న మ్యూకోజా తీసేయటం వల్ల ఇవన్నీ రెసిస్టెన్స్ తగ్గించేస్తే రివర్స్ అయిపోతాయి అన్నమాట సో రివర్సిబిలిటీ అనేది ఉంది బట్ కొన్ని స్టే అంటే ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ టెన్ ఇయర్స్ తర్వాత డయాబెటీస్ వచ్చిన టెన్ ఇయర్స్ తర్వాత మనం రివర్స్ చేయలేము ఎందుకంటే అప్పుడేమవుతుందంటే ఈ బాడీలో ఉన్న ఇన్సులిన్ అంతా ఎగ్జాస్ట్ అయిపోతుంది అనమాట నో మోర్ ఇన్సులిన్ సో అప్పటికి మనకి రివర్సిబిలిటీ పోతుంది సో జనరల్ గా ఇప్పుడు జనరల్ ఇప్పుడున్న నాలెడ్జ్ ప్రకారం విత్ ఇన్ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ మనం ఇవన్నీ మెథడ్స్ చేస్తే వీ కెన్ రివర్స్ ద డయాబెటీస్ అని చాలా మందిలో వింటుంటాం మనం నేను రివర్స్ చేశాను బికాస్ అంటే అర్లీ స్టేజ్ విత్ ఇన్ ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ ఇవన్నీ ఫాలో అయితే యూ కెన్ రివర్స్ ఒకటి రెండోది ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ కూడా చాలా రీసెంట్ గా చాలా రీసెర్చ్ అయింది దానిపైన బేసిక్లీ ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ ఏమంటే మనము ట్వంటీ ఫోర్ అవర్స్ లో వీ హ్యావ్ టు గివ్ ఎ గ్యాప్ ఆఫ్ సిక్స్టీన్ అవర్స్ వెర్ నో ఫుడ్ ఇస్ టేకెన్ దీన్ని యాక్చువల్లీ దీన్ని ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఈటింగ్ అంటారు యాక్చువల్లీ ఎందుకంటే ఎయిట్ అవర్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ టు ఈట్ అంటే ఫర్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ మనము చాలా మంది బ్రేక్ఫాస్ట్ స్కిప్ చేస్తుంటారు ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ అంటే అలాగే అనమాట ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ వల్ల డయాబెటీస్ ఇంప్రూవ్ అవుతుంది అని మనకి ఎక్కడ డేటా లేదు ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ వల్ల జనరల్ గా వెయిట్ కంట్రోల్ వెయిట్ తగ్గుతుంది సో వెయిట్ కంట్రోల్ కి ఇట్ ఈస్ వెరీ గుడ్ డయాబెటీస్ కి వెదర్ ఇట్స్ గుడ్ ఆ నాట్ అనేది ఇంకా డేటా లేదు అంటే మంచి స్టడీస్ లేవు కొంతవరకు డయాబెటీస్ కంట్రోల్ అయినా ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ లో డయాబెటీస్ కి రిస్క్ ఏమంటే కొన్నిసారి హైపోగ్లైసీమియా వచ్చి వాళ్ళు సడన్ గా దే హ్యావ్ ప్రాబ్లమ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ హైపోగ్లైసీమియా సో నా అడ్వైజ్ ఏమంటే వెల్ ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ డయాబెటీస్ కి ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ మంచిది కాదు నాన్ డయాబెటీస్ కి ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ మంచిది ఎస్టాబ్లిష్ డయాబెటీస్ ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఫాస్టింగ్ చేయకూడదు బట్ వాళ్ళు డైట్ ద వే దే ఆర్ కంట్రోల్ ఇన్ ద డైట్ తో చేయొచ్చు ఎక్సర్సైజ్ తో పాటు డైట్ లో మీరు చెప్పినట్టు ఈ కార్బోహైడ్రేట్ కాంపనెంట్ తగ్గించేసాలి థర్టీ పర్సెంట్ ట్వంటీ పర్సెంట్ చేయొచ్చు వీట్ కి రైస్ కి పెద్ద డిఫరెన్స్ లేదు మనకి రాంగ్ నోషన్ వీట్ తింటే మంచిది తక్కువ కార్బోహైడ్రేట్ అదేం లేదు వీట్ లో కొంచెం కాంప్లెక్స్ ఉంటాయి కార్బోహైడ్రేట్స్ సో దాని బదులు మనం రైస్ సపోజ్ బ్రౌన్ రైస్ తీసుకున్నాం అనుకోండి దాంట్లో కూడా కాంప్లెక్స్ ఉంటుంది సో బ్రౌన్ రైస్ ఇస్ ఈక్వల్ అండ్ టు వీట్ ఆర్ ఈవెన్ రెగ్యులర్ రైస్ తీసుకున్నా క్వాంటిటీ తక్కువ ఉంటే ఇట్ విల్ బి ఈక్వల్ అండ్ టు వీట్ సో వీట్ రైస్ అనేది ఆ కాంట్రవర
in fact human species is the only species which drinks the milk of another species inga vere animal kingdom lo ye species kuda vere thaagar mata so this is danike milk valla adhe vidhanga wheat valla kontha varaku intestinal mucosa lo some amount of damage avakasham so still mana south indian type of diet rice based diet is still the best thank you sir thank you murthu garu నెక్స్ట్ గెస్ట్ మన శంకరనేత్రాల యుఎస్ఏ పాస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ నేను ఫైవ్ ఇయర్స్ గా ప్రెసిడెంట్ గా ఉంటున్నాను తను ఇమీడియట్ పాస్ట్ ప్రెసిడెంట్ శ్రీమతి లీలా కృష్ణమూర్తి ఫ్రమ్ హ్యూస్టన్ టెక్సస్ షీ ఇస్ సపోర్టింగ్ సో మెనీ ఆర్గనైజేషన్స్ బట్ ఆల్వేస్ శంకరనేత్రాల ఈజ్ హర్ మెయిన్ ఆర్గనైజేషన్ షీ ఫీల్స్ అండ్ షీ ఈస్ ఎ బిగ్ కాంట్రిబ్యూటర్ అండ్ గ్రేట్ సపోర్టర్ అండ్ ఎవ్రీ టైమ్ వెన్ ఐ రిసీవ్ హర్ ఇమెయిల్ Uh, her uh, honors and awards and titles goes like one page so <laughs> she is a highly achieved uh, strong lady uh, so i request uh, leela ji to say a few words and uh, speak to dr nageshwar reddy thank you so much bala for this very flattering introduction i am really blown away by dr nageshwar reddy's presentation it was so informative just so much of information i'm trying to digest it all but i have a question i was very intrigued by this heat uh, process for the duodenum is it a one time procedure or is it a continuous procedure uh, thank you ma'am first of all thank you for all the support you are giving to shankar nathalam i think that is uh, helping a lot of poor patients here in our country uh regarding this heat treatment uh, the basic principle is we in the we produce a balloon with a hot water of 80 degrees centigrade and this will burn only the superficial part of the mucosa we have data now for 2 years and in the 2 years period uh, most of the people are remaining stable they don't require a second uh, uh, treatment but maybe if we wait for 5 years some of them may require so we feel we feel that once this is established treatment maybe once in 5 years or 10 years uh they may require another uh, treatment but up to now the data is a very recent advance up to now we have data for only 2 years and up to 2 years none of them have required a second treatment they maintain the same but the most important thing is uh regarding the lifestyle so once we do this treatment if the patient goes back again to the very westernized type of low re- highly refined uh, high carbohydrate diet chocolates and things like that again they'll get back the same uh, uh cells into the body so once we do this treatment we motivate all of them to change their lifestyles to physical activity exercise and then we find that they don't get back this thank you very much it's very encouraging thank you leela ji how prepared are we the government to uh, treat this kind of pandemics in the future what is your recommendation for well, i think the whole world was not prepared for such a pandemic it struck everybody in such a way that uh, we uh, got totally devastated but i think we learned a lot of lessons looking back at what happened so that our preparedness increase and uh, uh, we in fact got a pre information from from of our chinese friends chinese doctors were telling us common gastroenterologists were talking this is going to come in a big way be careful ipudu vaccine ochinanta varaku medical professionals they were putting their life uh, on the line అప్పుడు ఎట్లా మోటివేట్ చేశారండి అంటే ఆల్వేస్ వాంటెడ్ టు ఆస్క్ దిస్ క్వశ్చన్ టు ఏ డాక్టర్ లేకపోతే హోమియోపతి వాడు లేకపోతే ఏంటిది అంటే మన ప్రతి సబ్జెక్ట్ లో మిస్ ఉంటాయండి మెడికల్ గా ఎందుకంటే మనకి డేటా సరిగా లేదు ఆయుర్వేదిక్ గానీ హోమియోపతి పైన హౌ కెన్ ఇ స్ట్రెస్ రిలేట్ టు ది డయాబెటీస్ స్ట్రెస్ అనేది डेफिनेटली గా ఇట్ హస్ ఎన్ ఇంపాక్ట్ what are the simple things that anybody can do mr chepper diet is one of the things you can change and what are the simple things that people can do to change the diet apart from exercise which will help in this uh, process just wondering what uh, what do you think is the role of government in uh, helping with this epidemic no i think that's also a very important point and i think government has a huge role for millions of viewers are going to watch when we telecast this program uh, recently we in chennai lo we did our 100th mesu mobile surgical unit she is the sponsor for that landmark uh, mesu balagar covid time lo there was a chala vacuum ochindanna pedda vacuum because of this fear of unknown uh, second uh, even doctors themselves coming up and saying they are helpless 
అదేవిధంగా గవర్నమెంట్ కూడా చాలా ప్యానిక్ నోటీస్ ఇవ్వటం సడన్ గా లాక్ డౌన్ చేయటం ఇవన్నీ కూడా ఇట్ క్రియేటెడ్ ఏ హోల్ అట్మాస్ఫియర్ ఆఫ్ ఫియర్ ఇంకొక రెండు మూడు నెలల్లో కంప్లీట్ గా ప్రపంచమే అయిపోతుంది అనే లెవెల్కి వచ్చేసింది అది ఆ టైంలో 